Hi guys, welcome to week 32. I am back here in the bath, um, having my me time, already finished my last life. There is nothing better than having a bath for an hour, getting really wrinkly, uh, listening to a podcast, putting in my bath salts, and just chilling. Um, my rare moments of me time. And I have had very little me time this week because we did the most epic birthday party for Bodhi. I've shared some photos online. Um, he really wanted a real lost forest. So like I've mentioned to you before, he's become obsessed with this store called The Lost Forest. Um, which was something that I used to be obsessed with when I was a little girl. Um, and then it shut down for many years and then it just happened to reopen. And they're doing all the same creatures that I used to have as a girl. And so a lot of mums my age are reminiscing about puggles and all these things that they had when they were a kid. And my son has become so obsessed with his puggles that he treats them like they are his legit children and he'll like brush his teeth and then brush their teeth he'll give them a sip of water first and then a sip of water for him if he's watching something um like he watched a movie last weekend he placed puggle next to him and then he drew from the eyes up to the TV to make sure that Puggle was able to watch and then he'd sit Puggle up on his bottom and kept on drawing he's like okay you can see now he tucks them into bed at night time with a little blanket um, and he takes them with him everywhere everywhere we have a Puggle and it's funny because he was bringing this Puggle to school and he'd bring different ones each day and all the kids in his class were like what are these Puggles what are these Puggles and then sure enough, at the party, I decided that every child that came got to come home with a puggle. So sort of their party bag was, we have magical seeds and a crystal and a puggle. So now all the kids in this class have a puggle. And it was funny yesterday, which was the Monday after the party on Saturday, I saw the teacher in there, Miss Claire, and I was like, oh my God, she's going to be... <laughs> just uh, blown away by the amount of children coming to school bringing their puggles and they're not really meant to bring toys to school so I was like oh poor Miss Claire's gonna be dealing with all these kids and these puggles and sure enough they all brought their puggles to school um and then so she was like well the puggles need to stay in the bags until lunchtime or relaxation time um and I was like sorry this is my bad I've made everyone obsessed with puggles again um, but it's funny, like, seeing the kids at resets and lunch just on the playground holding their puggles. Um, so I've started this new wave of the lost forest creatures returning and, um, it's just, yeah. And Bodhi has never been more obsessed with anything in his five years. So I really wanted to nurture that and I wanted to bring the magic to him the things he talks about in his imagination i said to mark how can we create that for real and we have a forest up here on our property so we'll just like we we are going to make an enchanted forest if if anyone can do it him and i can get together and do it it will take full commitment and it really was a massive effort of like 10 hour days, doing faces on trees, building paths. Um, I'm like up on a ladder hammering in ivy, don't worry, I was very safe. Um, like dangling down, Mark got the smoke machine, we had a teepee, we had a fairy coming, um, a beautiful, beautiful company, um, Twig and Stick, came to do all nature-based play. So we had potions and clay making and wreath making and magical sticks that the kids got to make. And it just all fell into place. And Mark did the most epic treasure hunt where he was King Mark and he led the troopers 
through the property and they went from clue to clue to clue and the kids had to guess where things were and um, it eventually led them to down by our dam which was crazy because some of the kids walked through a bull ant nest so some of them got bitten by bull ants which was not the highlight of the party but I can look back on it and laugh now um, but everyone was happy because the treasure was there and there was lollies and magical things and stickers and crystals and all sorts of things that the kids could collect in their bags and they were all freaking out uh, and it was just such a special day um, it just meant that the week has been exhausting because that's been my main focus and then on top of it the Fringe Festival started in Adelaide and anyone who knows me knows I'm obsessed with the Fringe Festival I love all the shows um, just the Garden of Unearthly Delights is just so magical it really is I think that's the theme of our week um and there's fantastic foods and the buzz is just so vibrant and alive and I feel like everyone in Adelaide comes um and so it's packed full of people and you bump into people you know and everyone's happy and there are families running around and you're just on grass with your friends and the kids are going nuts and um Oh, it's just it's just awesome. So we ended up doing that the day of the party, the night of the party. Full commitment from us, 100% commitment. Um, but of course it meant I was very tired. And and yeah, Mark left today for two and a half weeks. So it's just me and the little men. Um, and my mum lives on the property too. So she's helpful. She doesn't get up as early as we do. Um, but she has been helpful and I'm going to be fine. And in fact, like the kids got ready for school way quicker this morning without dad there for some reason, um, which was funny. And yeah, it's just, it'll be hard without him because I love being with him, obviously, but I know that it'll be good for him to go and do some work in LA, for him to go see Izzy and for... Me to just focus in on some of the things that I've fallen behind on, um, some of my responsibilities with my business, um, but also just getting these renovations started. Uh, my kitchen hasn't started yet, and I'm having a baby in seven weeks. So, um, so I've been trying to get on top of that and figure out why the kitchen hasn't started. Um, but yeah, really good week just exhausting um but special really special and just having so much time with the boys and talking to them and observing how well they're playing together Forrest is loving his ELC he wants to go every day um which mummy doesn't want him to go every day because I need to have time with him um but I, I'm just, again, feeling really grateful, really happy here in Adelaide. So much movement from the baby. The most movement I've had my entire pregnancy, like full stomach contortions and everyone can see through my clothes. Just and she's really active right before bed and right in the morning. And then there are moments where she just is going to town. And it's crazy. I'm like, what are you doing in there? Um, having a little bit of pelvic pain, but that's fine. Sleeping well still. And I've been listening to some birth stories and hearing about the wild third births that a lot of people go through. And I think yesterday I let a little bit of fear slip in. I, let, I listened to a birth story and I was like, oh, wow. You know, I think you ha I had my dream birth with Forrest. And I, every aspect of that I enjoyed. And so I have this expectation that the third birth is going to go the same way. But from what I've been reading and people I've been talking to, you just have to let go of your expectation and, um, and your experience with your last birth. Because every birth is unpredictable. Every birth takes its own path. And so I've been really focused on from yesterday after we finished the party and the last like two days, just letting go of that experience and letting that be the way Forrest wanted to birth and knowing that maybe my daughter 
doesn't want to birth in that way. Maybe it's going to be something different. I have to be open to all situations and all scenarios. Um, I'm wrapping my head around that. Uh, I found birth really manageable and beautiful last time around. I don't know if it's going to be the same this time around. So starting to head into that frame of mind, which I think is going to serve me ultimately. And I think I need to be focusing on, on the process of letting go, but also any fear clearing. If any fear is coming up, working on letting that go. So it was only just this past week hearing some stories about how different the third birth is from the second. that I was like, oh my God, what's it going to be like? Um, but I know I got this. Uh, next week I'm going to work on my playlist and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. And I think that we're just still waiting to, to meet her. And in the time before she comes, just focused on family and being together and, and really making the most of being here in Adelaide and with my family and with my very good friends from school and it's just, it's really special. And you see me sweating like a pig. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go pick up the boys now, but I'm sending love. And I will talk to you for my 33-week pregnancy vlog. Okay. Oh, I can't show you the belly for obvious reasons. Won't be pretty. Um, but I will show you next week. Okay, bye.